continuing our look at perspective from the last video, I want to go ahead now and talk about the differences between one point, two point, and three point perspective and how they're going to work here in Rebel 3. So to begin then, I'm going to come over here and choose one point perspective. What you're going to see is that my second vanishing point is going to go away. And we're also going to lose our horizon line. However, it's important to understand that generally speaking with one point perspective, the single point would be considered to be on the horizon line. So the idea is we can place this point wherever we want, and then we would say lock the control point so that we don't accidentally move it. And then what you'll see with the lines that are coming off the cursor is that that one line is going back to the vanishing point, but the other two lines are going to be going straight horizontal or vertical. This is the way that one point perspective works. Now the idea of that is that if I were to go over here, make vertical lines, you would see that they're all gonna be parallel. And if I make horizontal lines, you're gonna see that they're all gonna be parallel. These guys don't vanish to any vanishing points. Instead, the only set of lines that are gonna to vanish to a vanishing point are the ones going back to this one point. This is the reason why it's called one point perspective. So the idea of one point perspective is that you would set up something where you would have your horizontals and your verticals straight up and down, something like this, and then you would be going back to that one vanishing point, something like that. And then maybe you would come in here and you would go ahead and begin to draw these lines closer to one another as they're receding back into space in order to create something like a wood floor or something along those lines in the interior of a room. So that's one point perspective in a nutshell. It's not real complicated. It's really only useful in very specific circumstances. And if you try to make it do too much, you end up with distorted drawings. So I don't recommend that you use it an awful lot. It's really primarily most useful for interiors of rooms. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear that out. Then we have two point perspective, which is what we started with by default. Now I'm gonna come over here and turn off the lock control point so I can reposition this. And typically speaking with two point perspective or anything other than one point perspective, this is gonna work best if we're zoomed way out. And the reason why is because we typically want to set our vanishing points outside of the boundaries of the document. And the reason why is because the closer the vanishing points are to one another, the more distortion we're gonna see in our drawing. It's also a good idea not to have these guys at equal intervals. And the reason why is because if you have them set equally, then what's gonna happen is basically you're gonna have a really boring type of drawing. So having one far away and one fairly close is gonna give us some interesting types of perspective here. And you can tell that by the lines that are coming off of my cursor. So once I have those the way that I want, I could just come back over here. I'm gonna frame this back up. You can see that even though it's off the document, it's still working just fine. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna draw a vertical. Now remember, that just like the one point perspective, the verticals are gonna be straight up and down. And you can see that by the lines coming off my cursor. So I'm gonna draw that. You can see that's coming straight down. And then I can track back to this vanishing point and track back to the other vanishing point. So I'll just go ahead and begin to do that. And you can just take it right off the document like so. Once you hit the end of the document, it'll basically stop drawing. And then you can just come in here and you could do something like say, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and draw something on the inside of this, like so. And then maybe I'll go ahead and pull that back like so and begin to draw out the information that I need to draw out in order to create whatever it is that I'm trying to create. So here I'll draw that real lightly and then I'll press harder there. And there's the inside of something like a garage or something like that. So that's two point perspective. And again, like one point perspective, this is more complex than the fact that you have two points. However, if you try to make this do too much, you're going to end up with something that's going to get severe distortion. It's not the most realistic perspective. Most realistic perspective that you can choose is going to be three points. So I'm going to clear the document. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the lock control points and I'm going to switch to three point perspective. Now you can see that a third vanishing point appears. And now if you look at my three lines that are coming off my cursor, you can see all three of them are tracking back to the relative vanishing points. And just like what we did with two point perspective, it's a good idea to go ahead and move these guys outside of the document in order to get less extreme perspective distortions. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this vanishing point, I'm gonna pull it way up, something like there, and maybe I'll pull this one even further out, and maybe I'll pull this one a little bit out. So all three of these are off the surface of the document. Maybe I'll move that line up just a bit. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be doing something here called the worm's eye view. And the idea of the worm's eye view is that we're gonna be laying on the ground, looking up at something that's going to be receding as it's getting higher. So we're gonna draw a building. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and lock the control point so that we don't accidentally move these even though they're outside the document. I'm gonna frame this guy back up and I'm gonna again begin by tracking back to that top vanishing point for the worm's eye view. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw down like so. And then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna do the same thing there. And I'm gonna come over here and do the same thing here. So now if I come over here and I track back, you can see this would be the top of the building. 
And then if I wanted to, I could come in here and I could say, okay, well, I want some sort of windows or something over here. And then I could come in and I could draw in whatever I need to in order to create the effect that I'm trying to create. So you can see how this three-point perspective works. And this is the most realistic type of perspective. If you wanted a three-point perspective that didn't have as dramatic of an impact here for the receding of as it's going up or if it was going down, if it was down below, then what you would do is simply move the point further away. And again, this is the most realistic type of perspective. If you're working in a 3D graphics application, the reason why it's called 3D is because of exactly this. We have three dimensions. So three-point perspective is the most realistic and the most flexible. However, it's the most complex. And generally speaking, you tend to want that vanishing point that's either above or below to be fairly far away from the center of the document so that your perspective distortion is not so extreme. Now that said, I'm gonna come over here and clear this. And again, I wanted to point out one other thing to you, which is the idea of saving these setups that we have for our perspective. If you save your document in any other format than the REB format, the REB format, then you will lose the perspective settings that you have the next time you open Rebel and open that document. So if you're gonna be working on perspective in between sessions, or you think you might ever need to get back to that perspective within the document, then what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you're saving the file as a .reb file so that you can always open it up. And then once you go back over here and you say, edit perspective, you open up with the exact same perspective setup that you had when you first set up your perspective, even if you closed the perspective panel. So again, make sure you save as a .reb so that you will save your perspective settings because it's very difficult to get back to the perspective that you have set when you're creating your drawings if you've closed the file and you've saved it as some other format than REB because then you basically have to manually try to find where those vanishing points are. And believe me, it's not an easy thing to do. So I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna go ahead and close that. And we're gonna go ahead and look at something different in the next video.